Hi guys, and welcome to the Truth Movement um, show, well, channel. We're going to go over um, our apostates' credible sources, right? Should you listen to apostates? We'll go over what an apostate is in this video, as well as different parts that you should understand about them. So let's begin. So, um, what what really is an apostate, right? So here it is. So this is from the American Heritage Dictionary, and it's one who has abandoned one's religious faith, a political party, one's principles, or a cause, right? So usually apostates are called ex-members or former members, right? So if you see, you know, Articles that say, oh, yeah, I'm a former member of blah, that's an, uh, you can consider that an apostate, right? Or ex-member, that's another, that's another term for an apostate, right? So usually apostates are called ex-members or former members. And this is from um, a professor of religious studies. Her name is Lonnie Cleaver, and she's at the Southern Methodist University. This is what she has to say about apostates. There is no denying that these apostates present a distorted view of the new religions to the public, the academy, and the courts by virtue of their ready availability and eagerness to testify against their former religious associations and activities, end of quote. So as you can see there, they're not credible, right? Um, they, they present a distorted view because they themselves have committed violations and have abandoned their own group. And you really don't actually know um, one way or another about their credibility, right? Um, they want to make themselves right for the violations that they've committed, right? So I'm going to go ahead and um, read, basically go ahead and go over more about that, right? More about what I just mentioned there. So here it is. So ex-members called apostates otherwise apostates, right, or an acknowledged phenomenon with known predictable patterns as documented by sociologists and religious scholars. To quote just one, I'm going to quote Brian Wilson. He has a PhD of Oxford University in the United Kingdom. So here's what he has to say. The apostate is generally in need of self-justification. He seeks to reconstruct his own past to excuse his former affiliations and to blame those who were formerly his closest associates. Not uncommonly, the apostate learned to rehearse an atrocity story to explain how by manipulation, trickery, coercion, or deceits, he was induced to join or remain within an organization that he now forswears and condemns. Apostates sensationalized by the press, have sometimes sought to make a profit from accounts of their experiences and stories sold in newspapers, end of quote. So as you can see, they, um, they want self-justification. They want you to believe that they were the greatest people on planet Earth while they were in the religion, and that for some reason, the church just suddenly decided to expel them or to kick them out, or they just suddenly decided to abandon the religion. Now, um, and ban abandonment is different than saying, hey, look, I'm going to leave, not really working out, in a positive note, right? If you're abandoning a religion, that means you just left abruptly. It's like, what? Right? So here's another quote from Brian Wilson. This is what he has to say. Start of quote. Academics have come to recognize the atrocity story as a distinctive genre of the apostate and have even come to regret, regard it as a recognizable category of phenomena, end of quote, right? So this happens with other groups as well, and even in marriages or broken friendships. The one who leaves sometimes goes a long way to explain how, the bad, how bad the relationship was or tries to justify that he abandoned his friends. This is a social mechanism and sometimes quite fantastic to listen to, but not a measure to find the truth, right? So some former members might complain 
about bad experiences they had or claimed to have had. So obviously they decided to not do something about it and abandon the organization. Maybe it was also just not the right thing for them. Just as most other religious organizations, the Church of Scientology does not hold members who do not want to be members, right? So if you don't want to be a member of the church, they're not going to keep you as a member. They don't care, right? If you don't want to be a member, they're not going to be like, oh, well, you can't. You can't leave. There's no such thing. No, you can leave. You know, that's it, right? So Scientology practices do not work properly if done under pressure or false premises. So who wants to go? or should leave or help to remedy perceived wrongs, right? Basically, um, should basically what the person should do is to go in to the church one last time, find out if you have an upset with them, it's super easy to handle it, super easy to find a solution that you both you guys can both agree on, right? So you guys can part ways and none of you have to think about it anymore. Right. Um, Ex-members who try to make a living as experts on the faith they abandon are clearly not neutral and not a good source for anything related. So they didn't go in and try to handle it with the church because maybe they were expelled. Maybe the church was trying to handle it with them and they didn't want to handle it with the church. Right. Because they saw money in being con artists. Right. See, so they're going to convince you that they tried to handle it or they were wrong. But in actual fact, the church tried to handle it. That's why they expelled them. Because when the other person doesn't want to handle something and causes a, a problem out of nothing, no religion at all wants to deal with that. The person shouldn't be a member if the person's just going to be doing that. Okay, so an unbeatable way to find out something about Scientology is to go to the local church or mission nearest to you and look around, get a tour and get informed. You can also go to a library and get a book from L. Ron Hubbard on Scientology, right? So it's a pretty comprehensive book. Um, it's called What is Scientology? It's huge. You should definitely get it. I would totally recommend that. Um, which And it tells you about Scientology beliefs and practices, organizational structure, the administration, um, and it's just, it's incredible. You'll have all your questions answered, really, in a basic form. Um, I definitely do recommend reading their eight, um, Ron, L. Ron Hubbard's 18 books that he wrote on the subject. Um, he documents all of his findings and his works in chronological order. Um, and then there's also many websites that offer free books. And, and other such things that you can definitely check out. I definitely check out Scientology Network at Scientology.tv. If you have any questions about the misconceptions you've been hearing, if you can't get it answered by the Scientology website, which is very rare, um, very rare at all, right? Um, I've done a lot of research on the misconceptions to um, fact check them. I've done a really good job. I have three books. You can get them at exposingcrimes.com or on Amazon. It's The Truth About Apostates, Escaping Leah, The Hidden Agenda, and the most recent book that I've written and released is Going Clearly Wrong. You can also get that on, um, you can actually get that at goingclearlywrong.com. You can also get that on Amazon as well. Thanks guys so much. If you guys have any other questions, let me know. Alrighty, um, send me a message. I think you can send me a message on um, my email, the truth about apostates at gmail.com. Again, that's the truth about apostates at gmail.com. Thanks guys so much, and um, see you in the next video.